Welcome to this program. We're going to speak today about uh, some actual things, some uh, very, thi very interesting things that are about the time we're living in. And uh, uh, I, have the, um, I have the heading of this preaching or talking today. It's called What was it necessary to close the churches for a whole year? I wrote this to the Christian papers in, I think it was May 21, and it was uh, the Holy Spirit moving on me to write it and to present it to the, both the, the, the church and the Christians and also the world and the government we are living in. So it has been... Um, it has been a uh, different way uh, <laughs> used as a platform of uh, prayer and we had a prayer meeting in the middle of the summer we prayed for Norway to be reopened after the downlock of uh, that has gone on that had gone on for more than a year and um, it's uh, now more and more things and now in the beginning of 22 uh, it's beginning of being uh, begin beginning to be revealed and exposed more and more what has happened and uh, the reason why the virus came and where it came from it came from a, a laboratory in Wuhan it is uh, also many nations now and governments that are uh, discussing was it really necessary to lock the society down and even also the, the churches and uh, uh, in May I was uh, aware of this and uh, today I'm going to speak a little bit about it just to just to reveal uh, what the Holy Spirit is revealing in our lives and in this time we are living in we have to live in the truth we have to understand the truth to live in the truth we have to understand the society and the times we're living in and uh, when i went to high school i read many books about the persecution of christians in the Soviet Union and Romania and other Eastern European countries at that time. That was in the end of 70s. Uh, it interested me and I gained insight into what were the totalitarian communist countries and governments. How they were based, how they were thinking, how they were working and what was the terms and the ideology in those countries. It was important that the population in those countries did not get insight into what was going on on the other side of what was then called the Iron Curtain. You know, Europe was actually divided into two, uh, two territories. One was the open world, uh, the Western Europe, and the Eastern Europe was, if you can say it like, behind the Iron Curtain. And uh, many people in our uh, countries here in the uh, West, we, uh, they were not informed, they didn't know very much about what was happening behind the Iron Curtain, but uh, we could read about it uh, in some Christian papers and in books and from authors that had been in, sitting in prison, had been persecuted and uh, church leaders in these countries that have been had been persecuted and it interested me very much and I read uh, like seven books about it and um, it um, made me understand the situation in these countries and also how does totalitarian systems and countries work how does this government works how does the media work how does the church uh, function in these countries and um, the people of these countries were at the mercy of the governments at that time who were engaged in deliberate and widespread propaganda. Propaganda is forced information. It's not uh, open information, open media, but it's, the media is now, uh, um, uh, they are now saying the same, they have the same voice, they don't uh, divide from each other they don't uh, criticize each other or tend to to talk different views on different uh, aspect 
uh, different uh, uh, things, but they they just say the same thing. And why? Because it's censorship and it is propaganda system that works in a totalitarian system. So it was brainwashing and control of the people. Free thought and media were completely unthinkable. Uh, atheism was the prevailing philosophy and way of thinking and all dissidents were imprisoned or sent to content concentration camps. Now you can maybe say this has not been the case in our societies in uh, the world today. But as I'm standing here, as I'm standing here, things are happening in Australia, parts of Australia, where the military is on the street, they're locking down the church, they force the churches to lock down, the media is controlled. Uh, Canada now has had uh, so much um, demonstration because the government has been so much into controlling the people, controlling the population, and even uh, have prisoned the churches and, and, and the pastors and stopped the churches for more than a year. So this is the situation in uh, Argentina, other countries in the world, and uh, we maybe haven't felt the same, uh, um, the same critical uh, totalitarian system here in Europe yet, but it's uh, very much on the verge, it's very much uh, attempting to, and uh, many of these things have we seen in the last almost two years. And it's starting to open up, but it's very important that we Christians are, uh, are uh, informed, that we know what is happening, and uh, we know what a free world is. For many of our young people, I think uh, they don't even know exactly what is a free world. Because I that lived in the 70s, first in the 60s as a child and then 80s, uh, we had a freedom that actually is not uh, here anymore. And uh, the freedom of speech, the freedom of talk, the freedom of have your own meaning op and opinion, the freedom of religion is more and more being narrowed down to you have to think like the government think, you have to say like the government say, you have to mean exactly what the mainstream media means, otherwise you will be criticized or you will be censored or you will put in a, be put in a box of uh, uh, criticizing the system and uh, and uh, sometimes persecuted actually. So it's in important that we understand what time we are living in, that uh, we are actually born in a nation of religious freedom. That's even in our constitution, <laughs> even in Norway and even in uh, most countries in Europe. And uh, we are living in those uh, system in, the, in these nations. We have had free speech, we have had free media, we have had free, uh, free religion for centuries. So it's very important that we understand that freedom and uh, pr appreciate that freedom and keep it up in our prayers, gather together as Christians and pray together and, and know what we are uh, uh, are, are, are losing or what people try to, to take from us. So this is very, very important. Um, so everyone at that time had read very little about uh, uh, what happened behind the Iron Curtains. And it's like now also people don't want to know. And because people don't are not interested, maybe they don't know what is going on in Canada. They don't know what is going on in Argentina or other places. And uh, we need to be informed what is happening in other countries. We need to be informed on what is happening in our own country, and uh, what is God's plan and what is God's God's how God feel about these things. Uh, what is a functioning democracy? 
because if you one uh, he said like this if you sleep in a democracy you will wake up in a dictatorship so you have to understand the freedom you are living in and stand on that freedom and uh, proclaim that freedom and believe in that freedom and pray together with other maybe Christians, maybe also non-Christians, that uh, see it the same way as you. And uh, we have to cultivate our faith and um, we have to sometimes be critical to the system that is in our society. You know, many Christians now, they, or people say, Romans 13 is the most important. We have to obey the government in all cases, in all situations. But the Bible talks about Peter. He was standing uh, before the, the high court at that time, uh, or the high priest. And he said, should we obey you more than we should obey God? So we are, as Christians, sometimes challenged to obey God more than we obey the government. We have to stand on our freedom, we have to stand on our rights, our legal rights, our constitution and the Bible. The Bible is actually our final authority and final uh, truth that and legal authority we are standing on. Um, so in Norway we agree at least on paper that we are f uh, living a freedom of uh, expression and freedom of religion and essential um, democracy um, and of life but we have to continue to stand on those rights and don't let go of them uh, i'm sure and i'm very open about it and i'm saying this limitation of freedom, limitation of speech, limitation of religion that is now enforced upon us has now been for a little bit less than two years uh, is, uh, has come because of the, they have enforced it as an, on the excuse of protecting us from sickness and that is a part of it but if the freedom that is taken from us is more valuable than these uh, limitations then we have to react and we have to speak out and we have to pray so for more than a year now the churches in norway have had to close down physical meetings due to a flu like virus we have had in a strange way being forced to accept this even though it can be proven that the churches are not the cause of this infection we are so incredibly worried about so in our church we have done all the restrictions we have uh, done, done all the different uh, instructions we have been given and no people have been um, infected in our meetings and but still we are limited last month we were limited to 50 people to gather and uh, many different ways they try to limit the church so we have to be uh we have to be open-minded we have to be um uh, we have to be aware of our freedom and to have to stand on our freedom and pray for that the fact that the most churches lead, church leaders and pastors silently accept this, accepted these orders does not make things better. So it's very important that you and I as Christians standing up for the truth. <laughs> I mean, that's what the church is. The church is the pillar of the truth in the society. If we are silent in a time where unrighteousness prevail, uh, we are actually part of the problem and not part of the solution. So we as Christians need to stand up. I don't know where country you are from that are uh, watching this video and watching this YouTube video or TV program right now. Maybe in other con your country it's totally different, but it's, I'm sure it has been challenges and it will be coming challenges and we have to understand this and we have to stand of our rights on our rights and we have to stand on the word of God so 
Why does pastors be silent? Why are they silent? Because they don't want to stick their head up. They don't want to uh, be, uh, you know, have the, the mob or the media or the government uh, go after them. So they don't want to be persecuted, in other words. So persecute, but persecution is part of the promises in the Bible. Everybody that is living a righteous Christian life is going to be persecuted, the Bible Paul says. So we don't, we don't have to be that fearful. It's important that we are not fearful in this time. We have to have faith about fear. Faith about fear. And that means we are standing up for truth. We are standing up for the Bible. We are standing up for our rights as Christians in this time. Um, so it is in our constitution, it is in our uh, legal rights in Europe as well as America um, to have freedom of religion. I have talked to different uh, government people in India and in Pakistan also and they also say it is freedom of religion in those countries. So. Uh, even though it is persecution now and then. So we have to stand on those legal rights. We have to stand on those rights that is God-given and it's given by the government and not being, being persecuted or bullied or pushed down as churches. And we have to stand on our rights. Um, I don't want to go into how dangerous this virus has been. Uh, it is uh, about by now and uh, as about thousand that have died in Norway and the middle age of those that have died is 83 years. Uh, my parents is about 83 years and, uh, and many people uh, in that age are not looking forward for living another 20 years. The most are, are, are actually in um, homes for elderly and uh, they, they, they have died in, in that age the most of these people have died. So um, in, uh, for in other years before it has been more that died of uh, flu, ordinary flu, yearly flu that we have in Norway. Uh, than of this COVID virus this time. So it's interesting to see. And uh, my question is, was it necessary to close all the churches for a year? Um, and uh, some have said we must protect the population from Ebola-like viruses so that their population is not exterminated. Of course, no one is disagreeing with that. But this is not Ebola. Ebola has a mortality rate of 50%. The COVID virus had a mortality rate of less than a percent, less than half percent in Norway. So don't talk about Ebola. Don't talk about AIDS. This is totally other viruses and other uh, epidemic situations uh, that will demand for uh, control of the society but if you control the society with 0.2 percent death uh, mortality rates then uh, what about if we have something milder than this virus in the future will you also then stop the whole society will you also then accept that the church will be locked down it's important for us as christians that to ask these questions and to ask the government about it, the media about it and ourselves about it uh, in between ourselves because this is, this is not normal and I know what is behind, I know who is behind, these are not kind people, these are not Christians, they are not even only atheists, some of these people are satanists that are behind this. So don't call me a conspiracy theorist. I'm a, a Christian that have never been outside the kingdom of God. I always 
grew up in a Christian home and if, if people talk to me as a conspiracy theorist then you should please look at those people that are behind this, behind these lockdowns, behind this craziness and even behind the virus and you will find it's not very nice people. It's actually very very bad people. I'm a missionary and I have lived in Africa and often traveled to India. We have practiced praying for the sick. Jesus actually told us to pray for the sick. He commanded us to lay hands on the sick. Everywhere we have been, we have done that. We have prayed for AIDS, HIV patients in Kenya, and they actually, some of them, they got healed and recovered. And we have prayed and laid our hands on lepers in India. Several of them also recovered. But now we are not allowed to lay our hands on the sick in Norway due to a virus that kills less than 1%? Are you serious? Are you serious? You, you can't tell me to stop laying hands on the sick because it's dangerous and I've laid hands on the HIV patients, laying, laid hands on the lepers uh, and I've seen them getting healed. And in this time, we, will, we need it more than ever to practice the practice of healing the sick. We need more than ever for the church to rise up and to stand on the ministry of healing because that's what we are called to as Christians, as believers of the Bible that believe the whole Bible. Um, so it's... Uh, the Bible commands us, the elders, to lay hands on the sick, the believers even, to lay hands on the sick. And uh, uh, especially, I would say, in a time of pandemic, we need to lay hands on the sick. That's the, that's the function, that's the important role and mission of the church, is preach the gospel and cast out devils and lay hands on the sick. And we must do it greater and, and more boldly than ever. Uh, some some uh, uh, in the government and so on has said you can just preach online. And some other uh, believers have said you can just preach online. But to preach online doesn't mean that you're reaching your whole congregation. That's one thing. And another thing, laying on of hands, you cannot do it online. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, baptize online. You cannot bless children uh, online. You have to do it physically. You have to do it there in the congregation. So these things are important. We have to, to stand on our rights to practice church as it has been done in 2000 years. And uh, Jesus didn't tell us Tell the disciples, you, you will reach the world, you will go out in the whole world and you will lay hands on the sick until 2020. Then you will you stop doing that and you will just go online. Jesus didn't tell that. <laughs> he didn't say that. He said, go in, you into the whole world and preach the gospel. So why am I picky about these things? Why am I standing and being boldly? about these things because if we are not standing on our rights we will end up like in Soviet Union like in Romania before uh, 89 and we will be find ourselves in a totalitarian system where the government tells us what we can do what we not can do and how we shall perform the ministry and that has not been uh, in our laws, that has not been in our history, that has not been in the Bible since Jesus instituted the church. Amen. That's how it is. So I don't know why few people have spoken out about this. I don't know in my country and other countries why so many Christians have been silent about this thing. It looks like the mask has taken this free speech away, <laughs> so to say. But we are not, we are not fearful. We are not hindered by these things and by the government or by the media or by 
uh, fear, we are standing on our rights and we are standing on the free right of speech, the free right of preaching, the free right of practicing church. And we are doing that even in your country. Uh, we are doing missions from our church in many countries and uh, the same kind of threats and uh, persecution has happened in your country that has happened in my country. So that's why I'm doing this on English. That's why I'm telling you these things. Stand on, firm on the word of God. Stand firm on what God have called you to do and uh, keep the church open and uh, preach the gospel and let people gather and uh, and uh, meet each other with holy kiss and all these things the bible have instructed us and let not fear lock you down this is so so important so so we need to pray we need to pray as christians we need to still pray we prayed in this summer and norway have been open since then and uh, we actually believe that uh, God changed our government because of the government we had uh, before September, they were a, a government that, that loved to lock down the church, loved to lock down the society. And we have actually now experienced a new government. It's not perfect. It's absolutely not perfect at all. In many ways, they are <laughs> worse than the former government, but they at least have kept the church open, they have kept the society open, and they will still need to keep the society open uh, because it is a praying church in this nation. It's a praying church all, all over the world. And if we are locked down, stopped to preach, stopped to practice the, the church and the, the ministry, we will pray. And when we pray, things happen. So don't be too cocky and think that, uh, well, the government can do what it wants to do. It cannot, because the church has been given the highest authority. And Jesus says, whatever you pray, whatever you bind on in heaven will be bound on earth. Everything you lose in heaven will be loosed on earth. So we have the authority and the, the gates of hell will not stand against or not conquer the church. That is the promises God has given us. So we can, we can uh, preach to people, we can preach to the government, and we can preach to the Christians, of course, and we will preach the truth and we will stand on the truth even in this time and season. I will encourage you where you are in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh or wherever you are to stand on the truth, to stand on uh, the facts that God has given us. He has given us facts that are about the, the fear and uh, the, the, the medical situation and everything. That's why we believe in the Bible. We believe in the Bible because the, the faith is about, is about fear. Faith is the ruling uh, factor in the Christian's life. So I will just encourage you with these words and uh, encourage you to stand on your freedom, stand on your freedom to, uh, to preach, to gather in church, to uh, have Bible schools, to do what God has called you to do, to lay hands on the sick, they shall recover, and to spread the gospel to everyone you know, everyone that moves and don't move, and be courageous and be full of boldness and be free from fear, because this is the time uh, of the end, the end time, but we are living in a time of sometimes persecution and, and opposition, but we stand on faith and we stand on the word of god and we are very very courageous so god bless you and uh, i love you god loves you and we will meet again god bless you